evening, and welcome to Wichita Shakespeare Company's production of Merry Wives of Windsor. My name is Ben Blankley, and I am the director of our production. I've also stage managed, script prompted, and put on a dress and wig to fill in for various characters during Tech Week. With that said, everyone involved with our production here tonight is a volunteer. From off stage to on stage, we all donate our time, talent, and resources. If you have interest in getting involved, please check our website or Facebook page for more information. We have open auditions, so you too could be in our shows next summer. We are privileged to have several new actors in the park in this production. Wichita Shakespeare Company is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and we rely on your individual donations. You may go to our donation table indicated with the lantern during or after our show and deposit your money in Shakespeare's face or scan the QR code with your phone. To donate right now without having to get up from your spot of grass, please visit our website with your phone at wichitashakespearecompany.org slash donate. Thank you for attending live theater here in South Central Kansas, and please enjoy Merry Wives of Windsor. Sir, you persuade me not. I will make a star chamber matter of it. If you are 20, Sir John Falstaff will not use Robert Shallow Esquire. If Sir John Falstaff hath committed disparagements against you, I am of the church and would be glad to do my benevolence to make atonements and compromises between you. If I were young again, the sword should end it. I think friends should be the sword that ends it. There is another device on my brain. Say, the mistress Anne Page, who is daughter to Master Thomas Page, which is pretty virginity. Mistress Anne Page, she has brown hair and speaks small like a woman. <laughs> She is this person for all the world, as you will desire her. 700 pounds of money, gold, silver, and her grandsires upon his deathbed. May God grant him joyous resurrection. See, when she is able to overtake the age of 17, it were better that we left behind our cribbles and crabbles and had desired a marriage between Mistress Anne Page and Master Abraham Slender. The grandsire left her 700 pounds? Aye, and her father make her a pretty penny. I know the young gentlewoman. <laughs> she has good gifts. Yes, 700 pounds and possibilities is good gifts. Well, let us be honest, Master Page. Is Falstaff there? Oh, I pray you, be ruled by your well-willers. I will beat upon the door for Master Page. What ho! God bless your house here! Who's there? God's blessing and your friend, and just a shadow, and the young Abraham Slender. I'm glad to see your worships well. Master Page, I'm glad to see you, my good and evil, your good heart. I'm glad to see you, good Master Slender. Is Sir John Falstaff here? Sir, he is within, and I would I could do a good office between you. Yes, wrong me, Master Page! Sir, he hath in some sort confessed. If it be confessed, it is not redressed. Is that not so, Master Page? Oh, here comes Sir John. <laughs> now, Master Shallow, you'll complain of me to the king. Knight, you have beaten my men, killed my deer, and broke open my lodge. But not kissed your keeper's daughter. <laughs> I shall be answered. I will answer it straight. I have done all this. That is now answered. Council shall know this. For better for you to keep in council, you'll be laughed at. No, oh, peace, peace. <laughs> I pray you, peace. Now, let us remember there are three umpires in this matter. There is Master Page. There is Master Page. There is myself. And the third party is finally and lastly, mine host of the garter. We three choose, hear it, and end it between them. Very good. We will make a note of that in our book. 
Oh, and we will work upon the cause as discreetly as we can. Oh, nay, daughter, carry the wine in. We'll drink within. Oh, heaven! This is Mistress Anne Page! How now, Mistress Ford? Mistress Ford, by my troth, you are very well met. By your leave, good lady. Why, bid these gentlemen welcome. Come, gentlemen, we have a hot venison pasty for dinner. Come, we, I hope we shall drink down all in kindness. Would I had but 40 shillings, I had my books of songs and sonnets here. <laughs> come, cuz, we stay for you. A, a word with you, cuz? There is, as twere, a kind tender made afar off by Sir Hugh here. Do you understand me? Of course, sir. Forsooth, uh, within reason. The question is concerning your marriage to Mistress Anne Page. Aye, that's the point, sir. Aye, sir, um, you shall find me reasonable. <laughs> very, sir, the very point of it, to Mistress Anne Page. Cousin Abraham Slender, can you love her? I will do more than that, sir, by your request, in any reason. <laughs> that you must. <laughs> will you, upon good dowry, marry her? I will marry her, sir, because you request it, cousin. But if there be no great love in the beginning, hopefully so, there will be some by the end. <laughs> I will marry her because you say marry her. That I am freely dissolved in, dissolutely. This is a very discreet answer. I say the fault is in the use of the word dissolutely. According to our meaning, the word is resolutely. This meaning is good. I, I thank my cousin, Manuel. Or else I would, I might be hanged. <laughs> knows Ford of this town. I ken the white. He is of substance good. My honest lads, I will tell you what I am about. Two yards and more. <laughs> no quips now, pistol. Indeed, I am in the waist. Two yards about. But now I am about no waste. I am about thrift. Briefly, I do mean to make love to Ford's wife. I spy entertainment in her. She gives me the leer of invitation. I can construe the familiar actions of her style, and the loudest voice of her behavior to be rightly Englished is, I am Sir John Falstaff's Thou hast studied her will, translated her will, out of honesty into English. Now the report goes that she had all the rule of her husband's purse. He had a legion of angels. As many devils could contain, and to her, boy, say I. Hey, the humor rises. It is good. 
I have written me here a letter to her, and here another to Mistress Page, who even now also gave me good eye. She examined my parts with most judicious oilade. Sometimes the beam of her view did gild my foot, sometimes my portly belly. <coughs> then did the sun undone your shine. <laughs> oh, she did so course o'er my exterior with the greedy intent that the eye of her appetite did sometimes seem to scorch me up like a burning glass. Here's a letter for her. She bears the purse too. I will be cheaters to them both, and they shall be exchequers to me. They shall be my East and West Indies and I will trade to them both. Give you this letter to Mistress Page, and thou this to Mistress Ford. We will thrive, lads. We will thrive. Bless and protect all. Hold, Sarah. Bear you these letters tightly. Sail like my pinnace to these golden shores. Let vultures grab thy guts. Well, 
I presume to desire the peace I pray you. Take a yacht. Take a yacht. I presume to desire this honest gentlewoman, your mistress, to speak a good word of my master in the ways of marriage to Mistress Anne Page. Is that you? Is that you? Ruby, buy me some um, paper. Stay out here a little while. I am glad he is so quiet. Even thoroughly moved. You should have heard him so loud and so melancholy. But notwithstanding that, I'll do you your master what good I can. My master himself is in love with Mistress Anne Page. But notwithstanding that, I know Anne's mind. That's neither here nor there. You, Shacknip, take this to tell you. But yeah, it is a challenge. <laughs> I will cut his throat, eat it the back, and I will teach a scalvy jacket priest to meddle or make. You made a gun, is that good to tell you? Alas, he speaks for his friend. Do not you tell me that I shall have on page for myself? My girl needs to kill the jacket priest. Oh. And? I appointed my oath as Jalti to measure a weapon. Thank <laughs> you. I will myself up on page. Sir, the maid loves you and all should be well. Should be. Follow me to the kiosk. Thank you. If I have not on page, I will turn your head out of my yard. Follow my heels, would be. You shall have a fool's head of your own. No, I know Anne's mind for that. Never a woman in Windsor no more of Anne's mind than I do. Of course, you smaller than I do with her, I think heaven. Who goes there, Harold? Who's there, I shall? Send me to the house, I pray you. How now, good woman? How dost thou? The better please your good worship to ask. What news? How does pretty mistress say? In truth, sir, and she is pretty, and honest, and gentle, and one that is your friend. I can tell you that, by the way. I praise heaven for it. How should I thank you? Shall I not lose my suit? Shall, sir, all is in his hands above. But notwithstanding, Master Kenneth, I'll be sworn on a book. She loves you. Hath not your worship a warrant above your eye? Yes, Mary. What of that? Well, thereby hangs a tale. Good faith, it is such another man, but I detest. An honest maid has ever broke bread. We have an hour's talk with that word. I shall never laugh, but in that maid's company. Well, I shall see her today. If thou seest her before me, commend me. Will I? In faith that I will. And I will tell your worship more of the word the next time we have conference. And away. Well, I'm in great haste now. Farewell to your worship. Truly an honest gentleman, but Anne loves him not, for I know Anne's mind as well as another does. I forgot the mind.
What shall I say to him? Why, I shall exhibit a bill to Parliament for the putting down of men. Least I, or he be rabid against me, I shall be revenged upon him, as sure as his guts are made of pudding. Mistress Page, trust me, I was going to your house. And trust me, I was coming to you. You look very ill. Nay, I'll never believe that. I have to show to the contrary. But in my mind you do. Well, I do then. Yet I say I can show to the contrary. Oh, Mistress Page, give me some counsel. What's the matter, woman? Oh, woman, if it were not for one trifling respect, I could come to such honor. Hang the trifle. Take the honor. Dispense with trifle. What is it? If I would but go to hell for an eternal moment or so, I could be knight. You liest, Sir Alice Ford. These knights will hack. Do not alter thy article of thy gentry. We burn daylight. Here, read, read. Perceive how I might be knighted. I shall think the worse of fat men as long as I have an eye to make difference of men's liking. And yet he would not swear. What tempest I drow through this whale with so many tons of oil in his belly a short Windsor? How shall I be revenged on him? I think the best way were to entertain him with hope till the wicked fire of lust hath melted him in his own grease. Did you ever hear the like? Letter for letter. But with the name of Ford and Page differ, to his great comfort in his own suit, why, here is the twin brother to thy letter. I reckon he hath a thousand of those letters, writ with blank spaces for different names. Why, this is the very sight, the very hand, the very words. What doth he think of us? Let us be revenged upon him. Let us appoint him a meeting, show him great comfort in his own suit, lead him on to fine baited delay, till he bonds all his hosts, or his horses to the host of the garter. Uh, nay, I will consent to act any villainy against him that may not sully the chariness of our honesty. Oh, that my husband saw this letter, it would give eternal food to his jealousy. Look where he comes now, and my good man too. Why, he's as far from jealousy as I am for giving him cause, and I hope an unmeasurable distance. Oh, you are the happier woman. Let us go consult on this greasy night. Come hither. Well, I hope it be not so. Hope is a crooked dog in some regards. Sir John affects thy wife. Why, my wife is not young. <laughs> he woos all, both high and low, both rich and poor, both young and old. One with another. I just true. My name is Nim, and I not like the humor of lying. I speak and I avow she loves your wife. There's the short and the long. My name is Nim, and Falstaff loves your wife. I do. The humor of it, quoth that. There's a fellow that writes English out of his wits. I will seek out this Falstaff. I have never heard such a drawling, affecting rogue. <laughs> oh, how now, May? Whither go you, George? Hark you! How now, sweet friend? Oh, why art thou melancholy? I am melancholy. I am not melancholy. Get you home, go. Now, you go, Mr. Spain. Have with you. You'll come to dinner, George? Oh, look who comes yonder. She shall be our messenger to the paltry night. Trust me, I thought on her. She'll think. You have come to see my daughter, Anne? I forsooth, and I pray, how does the Mr. Anne? Go in with us and see. We shall have an hour's talk with thee. 
How now, Master Ford? You heard what this name told me, did you not? Yes, and you heard what the other one told me. <laughs> do you think there is any truth in that? Oh, I do not think the knight would offer it. But these that accuse him in his intent towards our wives are a yoke of his discarded men. Were they his men? I Mary, were they? I can not the better for that. He lies at the garter. I Mary, does he? If he should attend this voyage towards my wife, I would turn her loose to him. And what he gets of her more than sharp words, <laughs> let it lie on my head. I uh, do not misdoubt my wife, though I would be loath to turn them together. I would have nothing lie on my head. A man may be too confident. Look where my ranting host of the garter came. How now, my host? How now, Bully Rook? Now, the gentleman. Cavalier of justice, I say. Good Master Page, Master Page, will you go with us? We have sporting him. Sir, there's a parade of epoch between Sir Hugh the Welsh Chief and Caius the French Dauphin. Good mind, host of the garter, a word with you. Will you go with us to behold it? My merry host has had a measuring of their weapons, and I think has a point of contrary places. For believe me, I hear the parson is no jester. I spoke to thee. Hast thou no suit against my knight? None, I protest. But I will give you a bottle of burnt sack to give me recourse to him and to tell him my name is Brooke. Only for a jest. My hand, bully, thou shalt have egress and regress, and thy name shall be worshipped. I have heard the Frenchman hath good skill in his rapier. I would rather hear them scold than fight. <laughs> Page be a secure fool. Stand so firmly on his wife's frailty, yet I cannot put off my opinion so easily. She was there, at Page's house, in his company. What they made there, I know not. Well, I will further look into it. I have a disguise to sound false death. I find her honest, I lose not my labor. If I find her otherwise, his labor will bestow. I will not lend thee a penny. Why? And the world is mine oyster, which I with sword shall Not a penny. Didst thou not share? Hast thou not fifteen? Pets. Reason, you rogue, reason. Yeah. Thinkest thou I'll endanger my soul gratis? At a word, hang no more about me. I'll be no gibbet for you. You'll not bear a letter for me, you rogue. You'll not do it, you. I do relent. But what thou more of man? Sir! 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 There's a woman here that would speak with you! Let her approach. Keep your worship, good morrow. Good morrow, good wife. Not so, and please your worship. A good morrow, good maid, then. I'll be sworn, as my mother was, the first hour I was born. Now vouchsafe the hearer and believe her. What did you say to me? Shall I vouchsafe your worship a word or two? thousand, fair woman, and I'll about safety the hearing. There is one mistress aboard, sir. I pray, come a little nearer this way. I myself, old master Dr. Caius. Will mistress Ford? What of her? Your worship says very true. I pray your worship, come a little nearer this way. I warrant thee, nobody hears. Mine own people. Mine own people. I think so. God bless them and make them his servants. Well, uh, Mistress Ford, what of her? Why, sir, she's a good creature. Lord, Lord, your worship's a wanton. Well, heaven forgive you and all of us, I pray. Mistress Ford, come, Mistress Ford. Mary, this is the short and the long of it. You have brought her such a canary, that's just wonderful. The best courtier of them all, and the court lay in Windsor, never have brought her to such a canary. But what says she to me? Be brief, my good she Mercury. Mary, she hath received your letter, for the which she thanks you a thousand times, and she gives you to notify that her husband will be absent from his house between ten and eleven. 
10 and 11. Aye, for suit. And then you may come and see the picture, she said, exactly what of. Master Ford, her husband, will be from home. Alas, the sweet woman leads a no life with him. He's a very jealous man. Mm, 10 and 11. Well, commend me to her. I will not fail her. Why, say you well. But I have another message for you. Mistress Page hath a hearty commendation to you, too. And she bade me to tell your worship that her husband is seldom from home, but she hopes for a little time. I never knew a woman so doted on a man. Surely I think you have a <coughs> Not I, I assure thee, setting aside my goodly parts and their attractions. I have no other charms. Well, that's in your heart, boy. But let me ask you this, tell me true. Have Ford's wife and Paige's wife acquainted each other how they love him? That for a jest indeed. They have not so little grace, I hope. That for a trick indeed. But Mistress Paige would desire me to send you for a little page. You must send me your page, no remedy. Why, I will. Nay, do so then, and look, he may come and go between you both. And in any case, have a name word that you may know one another's mind. Fare thee well. Commend me to them both. There's my purse. I am yet thy debtor. Boy, go along with this woman. <coughs> Sir John, there's one master book below with me, speaking you and be acquainted with you, and it's at your report of a morning's broad effect. Brook is his name? Aye, sir. Call him in. Such brooks are welcome to me, that overflow such liquor. Bless you, sir. And you, sir, you would speak with me. Sir, I am a gentleman that has spent much. My name is Brooke. Master Brooke, I desire to make acquaintance of you. Good Sir John, I sue for yours not to charge you, for I must let you understand I find myself a better plight for a lender than you are. The, the witch has something involved with me to this unseasoned intrusion, for they say, if money go before, always you lie open. <laughs> money is a good soldier, sir, and will on. Troll, and I have a bag of money here that troubles me. If you will help bear it, take all, take half for easing me of the carriage. But, sir, I know not what I may do to deserve to be your porter. I will tell you if you will give me the hearing. Speak, Master Brook. I will be glad to be your servant. There is a gentlewoman in this town. Her husband's name is Ford. Well, sir. I have long loved her, bestowed much on her, followed her with the doting observance, feed every slight occasion just to have sight of her, engrossed many opportunities to meet her. Not only have I bought her many presents, but I've given largely to those that would tell me what she would have given. Oh, briefly, sir, I have pursued love as love hath pursued me. Have you received no promise of satisfaction in her hand? Never. Have you import tuned her to such a purpose? <coughs> Never. <coughs> of what quality is your love, then? <laughs> like a fair house built on another man's ground, so have I lost my edifice by mistaking the place where I erected it. To what purpose, then, have you unfolded this to me? When I have told you that, I have told you all. Now, Sir John, you are a gentlemen of excellent breeding, uh, of admirable discourse, of great admittance authentic in your place and person, which generally allows for your many warlike, court-like, and learned preparation. Oh, sir. Oh, believe it, you know it. Now, here is money. Spend all. Spend all I have. Spend it. Spend it only Give me so much of your time and exchange of it, that is, to lay an amiable siege on this honest Ford's wife. Use your art of wooing, win her to you, sent to you. Any man may, you may as soon as it. 
Would it apply well to the vehemency of your affection that I should win what you would enjoy? Oh. Me thinks you prescribe to yourself very preposterously. Oh, understand my drift. She dwells so securely on the excellency of her honor that the folly of my soul cannot present itself. She is too bright to be looked against. Would say to it, Sir John. Master Brooke, first, I will make bold with your money. Next, give me your hand. Last, as I am a gentleman, you shall, if you will, enjoy poor twice. Oh, sir. I say, you shall. Want no money, Sir John. You shall want none. Want no mistress for Master Brooke. You shall want none. For I say, I may tell you this, I will be with her behind, uh, by her own arrangement between 10 and 11. At that time, the jealous day of her husband will be forth. Come you to me at night, and you will know how I speak. I am blessed in your acquaintance. Do you know Ford, sir? Hang him, poor cockley knave. I know him not. But I wrong him to call him poor, for they say the jealous Whittley knave hath masses of money for the which his wife seems to me well favored. I will use her as the key to the cockley rogue's coffer. I would you do for it, sir, so that you may avoid him when you saw him. I will spare him out of his wits. Thou shalt know, Master Ford, I will predominate over the prep over the peasant, and you shall lie with his wife. Come you to me at night. Ford's a knave. I will aggravate his style. And you shall know him as knave and cuckle come to you soon at night. Damned at the cure yet rascal assist. My heart is ready to crack with impatience. Who says this? This is improvident jealousy? <laughs> My wife has sent to him the hour six, the match is made. Would any man have thought this? To see the hell of having a false woman. My bed shall be abused, my offers ransacked, my reputation non it. And not only shall I receive this villainous wrong, but I will stand under the adoption of abominable terms by the one who does me this wrong. Tim Cuckle. The devil himself has not such a Oh, Paige. Paige is an ass. A secure ass. <laughs> he will trust his wife. He will not be jealous. I would rather trust a Welshman with my cheese than my wife with herself. <laughs> I will not. I will prevent this, detect my wife, be revenged on Falstaff, and laugh at Paige. I will about it. Better three hours too soon than one minute too late. Uh, what be all you, uh, 
Dan Page, no? No? <laughs> French. This is well. I desire your invention. See, let us knock our brains together and be revenge on this skull. Still the companion on this host of the garter. By God, with all my heart, he promised to bring me there is a fish, and by God, he deceived me too. Well, I will smite his noddles. I pray, follow. Nay, little gallant, keep your way. You were wont to be a follower, but now you are a leader. Whether you rather follow thine eyes or I thy master's heels. I would rather stand before you like a man than follow him like a dwarf. Oh, you are a flatterer. One day you'll be a courtier. Well met, Mr. Page. Good to know you. Early, sir. I came to see your wife. Is she at home? Aye, indeed she is. As idle as she may for want of company. I think if your husband were dead, you two would marry. Be true that to other husbands. <laughs> or had you this pretty weather top? What is the name of your your knight, Sir? Sir John. Some of you go, 
home with me to dinner. There you shall have sport. I will show you a monster. I pray you go, Master Doctor, and you, uh, Master Page, uh, uh, serve you. Well, fare you well. We shall have a prayer wooing at Master Page's. I come and on. Farewell, my horse. I'll do my honest night full stuff and drink with him. Oh, well, go, gentles. Have with you to see this monster. <laughs> Your consent. 
If there'd be one, I shall be two in the company. If there be one or two, I shall make it a tale. Where you go, Master Page? Ah! Remember you, uh, tomorrow, uh, the lousy knave, mine host. That is good with all my heart. No, the lousy knave, to have his chides and his mockeries. <laughs> Gloucestershire. He will maintain you like a gentlewoman. Aye, that I will, under the degree of a squire. He will make you 150 pounds jointure. Good master Shallow, let him woo for himself. Mary, I thank you for that. I thank you for that good comfort. She calls you cuz, I'll leave you. Gentlemen. 
two mistresses, what a beast am I to slap it? Have I lived to be carried in a basket like a barrow of butcher's offal and to be thrown into the Thames? Well, if I be served such another trick, I'll have my brains taken out and buttered and I'll give them to a dog for a New Year's gift. You may see by my size that I have a kind of alacrity in sinking <laughs> where the bottom is deep as hell. I should down. I would have drowned, but that the shore was shelvy and shallow. A death that I abhor, for they say the water swells a man. And what a thing should I have been if I had been swelled. Is Mistress Whitney, sir, to speak with you? Let me pour in some sack to this Thames water, for my belly is as cold as if I had swallowed snowballs like pills to cool the rains. Color in. Come in, woman. By your leave, I cry you mercy. Give your worship good morrow. Mary, sir, I come to your worship from Mistress Floyd. Mistress Floyd! I have had Ford enough. I was thrown into the Ford. I have my belly Full of board. Alas, the day. Good part, that is not her fault. She does so take off her bed. They mistook their erection. So did I mind to believe a foolish woman's promise. Well, she laments, sir, for it, that it would hear your heart to see it. Her husband goes this morning a burden. She desires you once more to come to her between eight and nine. I must carry her word quickly. She'll make you a visit, I warn you. Well, I will visit her, tell her so. But bid her think what a man is. Let her consider his frailties and then judge of my merits. I will tell her. Do so. Betwixt uh, nine and ten, sayest thou? Eight and nine, sir. Okay. Uh, go to her. I will not miss her. Peace be with you, sir. I wonder why I have not heard from Master Brooke. He wrote me to remain within. I like his money well. Here he is. Thank you, sir. Now, Master Brooke, you come to learn what hath passed between Ford's wife and myself? That, Sir John, is my business. Master Brooke, I will not lie to you. I did attend her at the hour she did appoint me. And sped you, sir? Very ill favorably, Master Brooke. How so? Did she change her determination? No, Master Brooke. Her husband, dwelling in a continual larum of jealousy, came to us at the moment of his encounter. And at his heels, a rabble of his companions, thither provoked and incensed by his distemper, and forsooth to search the house for his wife's love. What, while you were there? While I was there. And did he search for you and could not find you? <laughs> <laughs> you shall hear. As good luck would have it, comes in one Mistress Page, gives intelligence of uh, Ford's approach, and in her invention and Ford's wife's distraction, they conveyed me into a buck buck basket. basket. <laughs> <laughs> By the Lord, a buck basket rammed in with foul shirts and 
smocks, socks, foul stockings, greasy napkins. That Master Brook, there was the rankest distillation of villainous spells that ever offended nostrils. How long do you lay there? <laughs> Nay, you shall hear what I have suffered to bring this woman to evil for your good. Being thus crammed in the basket, a couple of Ford's men, his hinds, were called forth by their mistress to carry me in the name of foul clothes to Datchet Wayne. They took me on their shoulders, met the jealous knave, their master in the door, who asked them once or twice what they had in their basket. I quaked for fear, lest the jealous knave should have searched it. But away went he for a search, and away went I for foul clothes. Mark, Master Brook, to be crammed in in a villainous distillation with filthy clothes that fretted in their own grease. Think of that to me, who am as subject to heat as butter, a man of disconsolidation and thaw. And at the height of that heat to be taken and thrown into the Thames and cooled, burning hot like a, like a, a horseshoe into that surge. Think of that, Master Brook, hissing hot. Think of that, Master Brook! <laughs> I am sorry for my sake that you have suffered all this. My suit in is desperate. You undertake her no more? Master Brook. I will go into Etna, as I have into Thames, ere I will leave her thus. Her husband, this morning, goes a-burning. I have another embassy of meeting with her. Come to me at your convenient leisure, and you shall know how I speak. It's past eight already, sir. Is it? I will then attend me to my the jealous name her husband and the finest man dealt with jealousy that ever governed frenzy. I will go to her, Master, Master Brooke, and I will talk to her and get her to love you, and you shall have her. Adieu, I promise you, the consequence of the matter shall result in your having her. You shall have her, Master Brooke. You shall, cockled Ford. <laughs> Is this a dream? Is this a vision? Am I asleep? Wake, Master Ford, awake! <laughs> oh, this tis to be merry. This tis to have linen and buck baskets. Now take the lecher. He is at my house. He cannot escape me. It is impossible he should. He cannot creep into a pepper box or a half penny purse. Unless the devil that guides him should need him. I will search him up the place. If I have horns to make one mad, let the proverb go with me. I'll be born.
This was for your sorrow and eaten up all my sufferings. But are you sure of your husband now? He's a burning sweet Sir John. Why go, Dr. Ford? Why go? Oh, step into the chamber, Sir John. <laughs> Who's at home beside yourself? Why, none but my own people. Indeed, no, certainly. Speak louder. Truly, <laughs> I'm sure glad no one else is here. Why? Your husband's in his old wounds again. So takes on yonder with my husband. And so rails against all married mankind. Curses Eve's daughters to butt it buffet himself on the forehead. I'm so glad the knight is not here. Why does he talk of him? Of none but him. And he swears that he was carried a man was carried out of here while he was searching for him in a basket. So protest to my husband that he's still here now and withdrew all of their company from their sport to make an experiment of his jealousy. I'm sure glad that that knight is not here. He would see his own foolery. How near is he, Mistress Page? Hard by. He's at the end of the street. He should be here anon. I am undone. The night is here. <laughs> you are shamed. Utterly shamed. <laughs> and he is a dead man. A dead man. <laughs> what kind of woman are you? I don't. <laughs> Away. Away with him. Better shame than murder. Which way should he go? How should I bestow him? Shall I put him into the basket again? <laughs> yes. No! I not go out ere they come. Three of Master Ford's brothers watch the door with pistols, and none they shall issue out. Otherwise, you might leave ere he came. Neither copper, chest, trunk, well, bolt, but he hath an abstract to remember the country, and goes to the by his nose. There is no hiding it in the house. I'll go out then.
warrant of womanhood and the witness of a good conscience pursue him with any further event? The spirit of wantonness is indeed scared out of him. For if the devil does not have him and be simple, with fine and recovery, I think he shall never attempt us again. Ah, shall we tell our husbands how we have served him? Yes. If they can find it in their hearts that this poor, unvirtuous knight shall further be afflicted, we too shall be the ministers. My words will have him publicly shamed. And methinks there would be no period to suggest should he not be publicly shamed. Come to me with the forge with it. Shape it. I shall not have it cool. Letters in an instant. Within a quarter of an hour. <laughs> Dear wife, henceforth do what thou wilt. I will rather trust the sun with cold than be of wantonness again. Your honor doth stand again. Was a plague a heretic his firmest thing. Oh, tis well, tis well, no more. But let our plot go forward. Let our wives, yet once again, to make us public sport, appoint a meeting with this old fat fellow where we may take him and disgrace him for it. There is no better way than what they have spoken of. How? To send him word they'll meet him in the park at midnight? Bye-bye, he'll never come. You say he has been thrown into the river, beaten grievously as an old woman. He thinks there should be terrors in him that he should not come. So think I do. Uh, devise with how you'll use him when he comes, and let us two devise to bring him thither. There is an old tale of Hearn the Hunter, a sometimes keeper of Windsor Forest, doth always at midnight, still during winter time, the old man would come and run around the tree with great ragged horns on his head. You've heard of him, haven't you? Aye. Well, yet there wants not many that do fear in deep of night to walk by the herds oak, but what of that? Mary, this is our device, that false step after that oak shall meet with us. Why, let it not be doubted then, but he'll come. And in this shape, when you have brought him thither, what shall become of him? What is your plot? We too have thought of pawn, and thus. My daughter, Nan Page, and three or four of her fellow groves, we shall dress like fairies. <laughs> and they shall hide down by the socket. And upon their first scene of this night, they shall all roll out of their hiding place, gather around him, and in a fairy-like fashion, pinch the unclean knight. And then inquire upon why he dare tread in such a sacred grove. Until he tell the truth, let the supposed fairies pinch him down and burn him with their tails. <laughs> the children must be well practiced in this, or they'll never do it. So I, I would teach the children that behavior, and I would be like a jackanapes too. <laughs> I'll pinch tonight and burn him with my taper. My daughter, Nan Page, shall be the queen of all fairies, finely attired in robes of white. That silk will I go by, and in that time shall Master Slender steal my Nan away, marry her at Eton. <laughs> go, uh, send to Falstaff straight. Hey! I will to Falstaff. He will tell me all his procedures. Sure, he will come. Fear you not, go buy us properties and tricking for our fairy. That is about it. It is very admirable pleasures and very honest knavery. <laughs> go, Mr. Sport, send a false staff to know his mind, all to the doctor, for none but he shall have my daughter Nan. My husband is behind Slender. While 
well, Landon? He's an idiot. <laughs> the doctor is well money, and he has potent friends at court. None but he shall marry my daughter. Although, 20,000 more worthier have come to crave her. I would all the world might be cousined, for I have been cousined and beaten too, should come to the ear of the court, how I have been transformed and how my transformation hath been beaten and cudgeled, they will melt me out of my fat drop by drop. I warrant they will whip me with their fine wits till I am as crestfallen as a dry pear. Well, if my wind were but long enough, I would pray, and then I should repent. Now, whence come you? From the two parties, forsooth. Let the devil have the one party, and his damn the other, so they can both be bestowed. I have suffered more for these two than the inconstant villainy of human disposition is able to bear. And have not they suffered? Yes, I warrant, speciously one of them. Mistress Ford, good heart is beat in black and blue, and you cannot see white spot about her. What? Tell us about me, about black and blue. I was beaten myself into all the colors of the rainbow, and I was about to be apprehended for the Witch of Brentford, but that my manual dexterity of wit and my counterfeiting the actions of an old woman delivered me the foolish knave would have locked me in the stocks, in the common stocks, as a mere witch. Sir, let me speak with you in your chamber. You will hear how things go, and I will to you. There is a letter with this somewhat. Good hearts, what I do here is to bring you together. Sure, one of you does not serve him well, that you are surprised. <laughs> ah, come up to my chamber. Doctor sees his 
community, no more prattling. Uh, go, I'll stay. This is now the third time. I hope there's good luck in odd numbers. Hold, uh, I, I'll go. No, 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 you go, I'll stay. Uh, they say there is divinity in odd numbers, either in nativity or chance or death away. I'll do what I can to get you a pair of horns. Away, I say. Uh, hold up your head and mince. Now, how now, Master Brook? Tonight, Master Brook, you shall know the manner or not. Be you in the park around midnight in Hearn's Oak, and you shall see wonders. Went you not to her yesterday, sir, as you said you had appointed? I went to her, Master Brook, as you see, as an old man, and I came from her as an old woman. Her husband had that terrible, wicked devil about him that ever passed human understanding, Master Brook. I will tell you all. I went to him in the sh and he beat me in the shape of a woman. For in the shape of a man, Master Brook, I fear not Goliath. I am in haste. Go along with me. I knew not what it was to be beaten till lately. I will tell you strange things about this Ford on whom I plan to be revenged tonight. And his wife will be delivered into your hand. Follow. Come, come. We'll couch in the castle ditch till we have seen the light of our fairies. Remember, son slender, my daughter. I, sir, forsooth. I have spoke with Mistress Anne, and we have nay word on how to know one another. I come to her in white and cry, Mom! She cries, Budget! And by that, we know one another. That's good, too. But well, let me either her mom or your budget. The white will decipher her well enough. Night is dark, light and spirit shall become us well. Heaven prosper our sport. No man means evil but the devil, and we shall know him by his horns. <laughs> Let's away, follow me. Good master doctor, my daughter shall be attired in green. Upon your sight of her, Grab her by the hand and rush off to the deanery. You shall get married there as quickly as can be. Come before to the park. We too must go together. I know what I have to do. I do. Fare you well, sir. My husband will not rejoice as much in the abuse of Falstaff as he will chafe at the marrying of my daughter to the doctor. Better a little chiding than a whole lot of hurting. Where is Nan now and her troop of fairies and the Welsh devil you? They are crouched over by the oak, where upon our meeting with Falstaff, they shall display into the night. That cannot choose but amaze him. If he's not amazed, he will be mocked. If he is amazed, Amazed, he will in every way be mocked. <laughs> we'll betray him finally. The, against such moodsters and their lechery, those that betray them do no treachery. The hour draws on. To the oak, to the oak. Windsor Bell struck 12. The minute draws on. Remember, Jove, you were a bull for thy Europa love.
set on thy thorns, thy horns, O oh, powerful love, that in some respects makes a man a beast, and in others a beast a man. But as for me, I am here a Windsor stag, and I think the fattest in all the forest. <laughs> Who comes here? My doe. Sir John, art thou there? My <coughs> male dear. My doe with the black scut. <laughs> well, let the sky rain potatoes. Let it sound to the tune of green sleeves. Let there come a tempest of provocation. I will shelter me here. Mistress Page, just come with me, sweetheart. Divide me like a bride buck to each a haunt. <laughs> I'll keep my sides to myself and my horns I bequeath to your husbands. Speak I like Hearn the Hunter, as I am a true spirit. Welcome. Alas, what is that noise? Heaven forgive our sins. What should this be? Away, away, away! away. I think the devil will not have me damned, lest the oil that's in me should set hell on fire. Fairies, black, gray, green, and white, will shine revelers in shades of night. Orphan airs, fixed destiny. Attend your office to your quality. Cry your hog make the fairy boys. Elves, list your names. Sign to your toys. Cricket, towards the chimneys, thou shalt leap. For fire stop my tongue break. Hearts unkept. These are fairies. He that speaks to them shall die. I'll wink and crouch. No man their works must I. Where's Bede? Go you, and where you find a maid that ere she sleep has dry said her prayers, be her be. Those that sleep and think not on their sins, pinch them, arms, legs, back, sides, and shins. About, about, search Windsor Castle elves within and out. Strew good luck on every sacred room that it may stand to protect you. Each fair installment coat and several crests with oil blazing evermore be blessed. But sapphire, pearl, and rich embroidery buckle below fair knights of bed and knee. Fairies use flowers for their character. Away disperse, but till tis one o'clock, our bands and custom round about the oak turn the hunter, let us not forget. I pray for you, lock your arms hand in hand, yourselves in order set. Twenty glowworms will our lanterns be to help guide us around the tree. Oh, stay! I think I smell a man of Middle Earth! Heaven, deliver me from this Welsh fairy, lest I be transformed into a piece of cheese! The trial fire touch me his finger end. If he be chased, the flame will back descend and turn him to no pain. But if he starts, it is the flesh of a corrupted heart. Come, will this wood take fire? Oh! And we'll, as 
nothing enjoyed a board other than a cudgel, a buck basket, and 20 pounds of money, which shall be paid to Master Brooks. Oh, sir. And now horses are arrested for it, Master Brooks. Oh, Sir John, we have had ill luck. We could never meet. I will never take you for my love again. But I will count you my dear. <laughs> <laughs> I do begin to perceive that I am made an ass. <laughs> I and an ox too. Both proofs are excellent. And these were not fairies. <coughs> I was three or four times of the thought they were not. But the guiltiness of my mind and the sudden surprise of my powers drove me to the received belief against all rhyme and reason that they were fairies. Sir John, Sir God, repent from thy sins and fairies will not pinch you. <laughs> well said, Fairy Hugh. Oh, and your jealousies too, I pray you. I will never mistrust my wife again. Thou art able to woo her in good English. <laughs> Have I put my brain out in the sun and let it dry that it lacks matter to prevent such gross overreaching? Am I to be ridden by a Welsh goat? Tis time I should be jumped with a piece of toasted cheese! <laughs> Sir John, oh. cheese is not good to give butter, and your belly is full of butter. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh and potter have I lived to be the taunt of one who makes fritters of England. <laughs> Sir John, did you really think that we would risk our virtue to have the devil make you our delight? Well, I am your theme. You have the start of me. I am your subject. Use me as you will. Aye. Will you have you to Windsor, where you shall meet one Master Brooke, of whom you should have been a pander above and beyond what you have suffered? I think to repay that money will be a fighting affliction. Yet be cheerful, knight. Thou shalt eat a posset tonight at my house, where I will desire thee to laugh at my wife, who now laughs at thee. <coughs> Tell her Master Slender hath married her daughter. Doctors doubt that. If she be my daughter, he, or she no doubt, is Dr. Caius' wife. Whoa! Whoa ho! Whoa ho! Father Page! How now, son? How now? Have you dispatched? Dispatched? No on it. I would make the best in Gloucestershire. <laughs> Word I were hanged else. Of what, son? I went to Eton to marry Mistress Ann Page, and it's a great lubberly boy. <laughs> Upon my life, then, you took the wrong. What need you tell me that, sir, when I took a boy for a girl? Although, if I would have married him, as he was in women's apparel, I would not have had him. <laughs> Did I not tell you how you would know my daughter by her garments? I went to her in white and cried, Mom! She cried budget, as Mistress Anne and I had appointed. But it was not Mistress Anne, but the postmaster's boy. <laughs> <laughs> Good George, be not angry. I knew of your plot, and thus changed our daughter into green. And no doubt she is now with the doctor at the deanery, and thus married. There is Miss Les Fesh. I am cousin. I am married with your son. A dark, dark color. <laughs> a boy. Oh. <laughs> Fire! Empty the boy, fire! 
hath got the right hand? Uh, my heart misgives me. Oh, here comes Master Fenton. How now, Master Fenton? Come, forgive me, my father. My mother, please pardon. Now, good mistress, why went you not with Master Slender? Why did you not go with the doctor? You do amaze her, hear the truth of it. You would have married her most shamefully, for there was no proportion held in love. She and I have often contracted. The sin she has committed is holy. She has shunned a thousand irreligious cursed hours which forced marriage would have brought upon her. Stand not amazed. Fear is no remedy. In love, the heavens do guide the state. Money buys land, buys your soul by fear. I <laughs> am glad, though you have taken a special stand to strike at me, that your arrows have glanced. Well, what remedy? Fenton! God give thee joy. What cannot be eschewed must be embraced. When night dogs run, hey. all sorts of deer are chased. <laughs> I shall muse no further. Good Master Finn, may you have many, many merry days. Husband, let's go home, and everyone can join us around the country fire with stories and laughter, Sir John and all. Let it be so, Sir John, for you shall yet hold your word with Master Brooke, for tonight he shall lie with four. <laughs> <laughs>